Hello everyone, and welcome to Darkside RP's Mod Overview. Today, we'll be covering a few different topics. First up, Melee Combat. Atlas's Melee Combat has always left something to be desired. It always felt slow and outright clunky compared to other sandbox games. So, to start things off, we've put a large focus on mobility and the flow of Melee Combat. What does this mean, exactly? Well, to start things off, we've adjusted swing timers on melee weapons. No more slow motion swings with a sword. We've also adjusted damage values for every weapon in the game. And as per usual, we won't be releasing those damage numbers. What we can tell you is we've added different armor piercing values to various weapons. So now, as the season progresses, you won't run into that unkillable player because of their armor. That said, Armor durability has also been increased across the board and explosive damage has been rebalanced. As mentioned in the ship combat video, fire damage has also been heavily adjusted as it was a huge point of frustration in previous seasons. Standing in fire is still bad, but now it's no longer an instant death. We've also added friendly fire to all weapons. So now swarming a single enemy and swinging wildly isn't the wisest of ideas. Next, here at Darkseid, we truly missed the vanilla gliders. Yes, they were absolutely overpowered, and you could even glide from grid to grid if you were good enough. So naturally, we brought them back. We will have a few rules in place to keep them from being abused in combat, so keep an eye out for those. Now, depending on who you are, you'll either love or hate these last three changes. Firstly, we removed floating damage numbers. We've always found these to be immersion breaking and it only assisted those who would rather min-max over roleplay. Next, let's talk crosshairs. In Atlas, crosshairs had three phases, aiming, hovering, and hit markers. When hovering over an enemy, these crosshairs would turn red and would guarantee that your shot would find purchase. This made ranged weapons rather dull in combat. So we removed the hovering phase. Hit markers will still appear if you land a shot, but we just felt it was time for the training wheels to go. Lastly, a very well-known and abused mechanic was to make your character as short as possible. Why? Because doing so made your character harder to hit in combat. Now, don't get us wrong. There were plenty of people who played a short character very well. But unfortunately, this was dominated by people who wanted to win by gaining any advantage available. So we decided to put in a debuff if you're below a certain height threshold. This debuff will nerf your health, stamina, melee damage, and weight carry capacity. It will also not allow you to helm anything larger than a sloop. That's right, no more teeny tiny captains at the helm of a ship that are impossible to hit. Now for our next topic of the day, PVE. Let's start with the Mythos Overhaul. Now, mythic creatures will drop unstable mythos, which will need to be refined via a converter. If you're a law-abiding citizen, you might be able to pick one of these up from the Navy. Otherwise, you might want to pay a visit to the black market. Mythos mines will also be available, but once again at the discretion of the Navy for roleplay purposes. These structures will passively collect mythos, which will need to be collected every so often. Mythos won't have much use until roughly mid-season, and it will be considered a high-end material in multiple fields, such as cooking, alchemy, or even fuel. Previously, the PvE islands were a cakewalk, so we aimed to crank them up a notch. Now, alphas and mythics on PvE islands will no longer display their levels to keep everybody on their toes. And to spice things up a little bit more, the Hydra has also been rebalanced. As much as we want to, we won't go into detail. We'll just leave it at this. Atlas was originally classified as an MMO. And what's an MMO without a raid boss? Last up are the Outer Reaches. As mentioned in the first video, the Outer Reaches are islands with a higher resource yield, but dangerous to build in. This was to keep the play space small to increase organic interaction. So this go around, we actually made a storm and uh, it's proven to be rather deadly. With that said, let's change topics. Roleplay tools. 
In this section, we'll be covering a few of the many items that are designed to purely enhance the roleplay setting. Let's start off with something fun. Spotlights. These are exactly what they sound like. Spotlights can be used to enhance a variety of situations, such as that play you're putting on or even searching the waters for wayward sailors. Last season, it was brought to our attention that we have a handful of members who suffer from epilepsy. With this in mind, we made sure that when these are pointed in your direction, it will not yield a blinding light, but instead will offer a soft, diffused light. Next up are the marketplaces. These shop stalls can be placed anywhere you'd like and can be stocked up with your goods to sell. Passers-by can shop these and purchase your wares even when you're not around. Set up a few of these in your marketplace or even your docks to earn some coin while you get some rest. Shop stalls will also be placeable at Freeports through Roleplay. With Freeports being such a huge point of foot traffic, these will be an asset worth obtaining. Moving on to the Notary system. This includes a fair amount of items that will enhance your roleplay through documents, letters, and journals. Journals are simple books that can be written in, which can be mass produced via the printing press. How can this enhance roleplay? Well, imagine if you're a pirate and you got your hands on a Navy patrol ledger. You'd be able to easily avoid all of the Navy vessels or even sell that information to your favorite smuggler. Next up are letters, envelopes, and letter seals. It's not uncommon to receive correspondence from people in the far reaches of the world. Letters and envelopes prevent people from peeking at what you'd like to be private, and letter seals ensure that they're authentic. If the seal has been broken, you know that you're not the only one that has viewed this letter. Speaking of which, custom letter seals are available on our Patreon. Since these items don't give any advantage other than a little extra flair for your roleplay, we were comfortable offering this. If you'd like to support what we've been building over the last two years, then head on over there. We should note, however, no items will give any sort of advantage. For instance, you can name an island, but this does not give you any sort of claiming rights to it. Sorry, no pay to win here. For those of you who are able to support, we thank you. And for those who can't, fear not. Our roleplay servers are free and will remain that way. Okay, moving on to another fun topic, animations. One thing severely lacking from Atlas Roleplay were the available emotes for you to use. Here is Vanilla Atlas's emote wheel, and here is ours. Upon spawning into the world, you'll have a tome of emotes in your inventory. Simply read it, and once you're done, you'll have access to 66 emotes and dances all of which can be bound to your F keys. Prison cells are also making a return. Captive RP is pretty commonplace, but due to the mechanics of Atlas, it can be rather annoying. Someone would have to bring you food and water a little too often just to keep your character from dying. These cells will offer a passive buff that will stabilize your captives, food and water levels. By all means, keep bringing them food and water to keep the roleplay going, but now it's no longer the giant headache that it was previously. The nooses have also been redesigned to be a little bit more lethal. Previously, hanging a pirate was essentially watching somebody making awkward gurgling sounds for three minutes until the noose finally killed them. Now, they'll finish the job much faster. Once they're dead, you can use a gravestone. These come in a few variations and can have names placed on them. So now, you can honor your fallen brethren properly. Now it's time to talk clothes. As you've no doubt seen from the previous videos, we've introduced quite a few new clothing items. These are all clothing skins and can be added to any of the existing armor sets just to make life easy for you. Shirts, pants, dresses, hats, masks. With over 50 new clothing items, there will be a little something for everyone. Speaking of clothes, what better way to display them than on our new mannequins? These are fully posable, so use them to distract your enemies, help sell your clothing, or just finally have a friend to talk to. Hi, Steve. <laughs> I miss you, pal. Last up for this topic, let's talk about something a little bit more surreptitious in nature. In previous seasons, smugglers had to get pretty creative when it came to their roleplay, and we thought we'd offer something to assist. Introducing Smugglers Doors. 
These blend seamlessly into your ship or structure to help you smuggle and hide your goods. Now it's time for the last topic of the day, homesteading and medicine. These two civilian staples have entirely redefined our Atlas 5.0 overhaul. Our homesteading skill tree has now been updated to include four branches, farming, cooking, mixology, and alcohol production. Farming, while simple, is critical to the cooking and medical systems. Crop cultivation has been significantly expanded and players will find that they can now grow the majority of native herbs, fruits, and vegetables. Additionally, there will be new exotic seeds that are necessary for some of the cooking and medical recipes. Some of these plants will be considered contraband, so be careful on who you buy your seeds from. Cooking, on the other hand, has been entirely rewritten into a more complex and immersive system. Players will now find that recipes take a few more steps to prepare, but this will allow for prep cooks to help head chefs with their daily work without having to invest their entire roleplay into cooking. Let's give an example recipe. Beer braised ribs. You'll need flour, barbecue sauce, and a spicy herb blend from your cooks. Then you'll need beer from a local brewer, and lastly, some rib meat from a farmer that specializes in domesticated animals. Most players will be able to get by with just a couple basic meals to sustain their needs, but many will find themselves searching out the best chefs on the sea to prepare the mightiest of meals. These high-end meals will not only top you off and fulfill your vitamin needs, but they will also grant you a buff that will reduce your need to eat and drink for a bit. Now, what is a pirate server without a solid alcohol system? With our new brewing barrel, you'll be able to ferment alcohol using yeast and various resources to create tons of authentic recipes that will definitely wet your whistle. But if wine and beer aren't strong enough for you, we also have a new distiller. In a two-step process, skilled distillers will be able to run fermented mash through the distiller in order to produce bottles of hard alcohol that will definitely pack a punch. To top off the system, mixologists are able to create cocktails using various alcohols produced by the brewer and distillers. With over 300 new recipes, homesteading has something for everyone. Now on to medicine. Our medicine tree has been expanded to include alchemy, and in order to create any of these new medical items, exciting new resources can be found throughout the world, some of which are quite rare so keep an eye out for anything that might be useful. Just beware, some of these items are considered contraband due to their dangerous properties. The medical branch includes the typical base game medical kits that are critical to battle. Additionally, it will now have bandages, antidotes, vitamin supplements, and other healing products. It will include various props and potions to help expand your roleplay as a doctor and as a patient such as a prescription bottle that can be labeled by your doctor, or some potions which just add some fun visual effects. From here, players can choose to expand their knowledge and learn potion craft, which helps provide helpful buffs and benefits, or toxicology, which allows for the creation of maladies and poisons. Keep in mind, while toxicology can help aid you in your endeavors by weakening your enemies, many of these fatal products are considered contraband, so crafting or possessing them is considered illegal. Still, isn't a little risk worth it sometimes? Now, we should warn you, this season it's going to be very important that you get your potions from a reputable source, because alchemists will be able to dye their creations and tag them with their own custom information. This means what you're drinking could be anything out there. And that'll wrap up the mod overviews for 5.0. We're aiming to have a soft launch on March 9th, and barring any critical errors, we'll be officially launching the season on March 11th. Make sure to sign up at darksiderp.net, and we'll see you soon.